welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about Sintoya Brown. The, if you've not seen it, it's all over Netflix and it is a popular show at the minute. It is a true story. It's about Sintoya Brown. If you haven't seen it, go ahead, go watch it now before you watch this video because there's some spoilers. Um, if you like spoilers, then stay and watch. So Sintoya Brown was 16 years old at the time of this crime happening. She was charged with murder. Um, they were thinking about whether to try her as an ad a minor or an adult. She did end up getting tried and charged as an adult. So she was sentenced to life in prison. Sintoya is now 32 years old. And she has been set free. So the story is this, her mum, going all the way back, all the way back to her little, little Sintoya being born, um, her mum was basically taking all the substances you can think of, um, was an alcoholic, drug addict, and uh, at one point she was trying to give Sintoya up for, to strangers on the street. Anyway, she, Sintoya finally got into the adoption ring or whatever you call it. She got put up for adoption and a teacher adopted her. So it gave her a nice life. However, Sintoya, as she grew up, got into quite a bit of trouble. She got in with the wrong crowd and she was basically having sex for money, basically. She got friendly with this man and his name was Cutthroat. Really? 16 year old. Why would you go near somebody with that new name? I don't know. Um, yeah, so she got into a relationship with this man. And it turns out, well, she. this is what she said, that he um, forced her into a life of, well, being a lady of the night, really. I can't say the word because of YouTube. So at 16 years old, she was uh, basically a lady of the night at the hands of this man. She also said that throughout their relationship, I use that word very finely, relationship, um, he sexually and physically abused her. I don't know, we can't say how true this is, but basically he was her pimp. One night while they was in this motel, um, he basically turned around to her telling her that she was getting lazy and she needed to go out and earn herself some money. So this is what she did. She went out and while she was out walking, she said she didn't know where she was going to walk to. She just had to, but she knew there was a regular spot where people pick people up. So that's where she went to. And this guy pulls up to her and ends up taking her home. He offered to pay $150, apparently, to think, I don't know what the going rate is for a person like that, because I've never done it. I live in England, so it might probably, around here, you give a fiver and you, you know what they say, lucky, lucky five dollar. <laughs> no, anyway, this is serious, guys. Um. So yeah, this man, uh, Johnny Allen, picks her up, offers to pay her $150 and takes her back to his house, which she says she's never done that with anybody before. Um, but she thought, well, if it gives her all a roof over her head for the night and gets her £150, why not? She's 16 years old. This guy was 43. So she's 16, he's 43. Now I don't know what, what age in America it's legal for you to um, have sex. In England it is 16. I think. 
let me question our laws. In England it is 16. I'm pretty sure it's 18 in America, I'm not sure. Might be wrong. You'll have to tell me in the comments what, what age it what age it is. Um so anyway, she says that they had McDonald's. Might not have been McDonald's. I'm just thinking McDonald's. It was burgers anyway in a drink. So they ate that. He was bigging himself up, saying that he's really important, showing her these guns that he had in the house. And she was starting to feel a little bit, um, a little bit nervous. So anyway, she ends up just saying, can we, he's obviously trying to get her to come and do the dirty. And she just, because she's not feeling quite safe, Although, thinking on it, if you don't feel safe, you'd probably just leave, if possible. Um, so yeah, she says, well, can we take a nap first? Because I'm just feeling a bit tired. So he says, yeah, so they get in bed together. And one thing leads to another. He gets naked and he and starts touching her. So she says, and she's she's starting to get ner more nervous and more nervous, and she became paranoid. And this is the thing that leads to the murder. Okay, any paranoid person, whether she's sixteen or not, is going to be panicked. Deep inside, you've got that gut feeling that something bad's going to happen. You're paranoid. Someone's out to get you. you so she became really paranoid and he rolled over to reach for something on his bedside table. Could be simple, he could be turning the lamp out, he could be reaching for a cigarette, I don't know. He might not have smoked, I don't know. He could have been reaching for a sweet while he's naked in bed with a 16 year old minor. Uh, um, anyway, she thinks in her head that he's going to pull a gun out on her. So she pulls out this gun, 40 caliber pistol, from a bag that this cutthroat person had given to her and pops him in the head. Yeah. I'm pretty sure on the documentary it says that she shot him more than once. I might be wrong. That might be a different. I think that's a different thing. I think I've been watching Christina Randall and there's somebody on there who shot the boyfriend and shot him again and again because he wasn't dead. Anyway, so she shoots him in the back of the throat. Back of the throat? Back of the head. That would have been, well, it wouldn't have been okay. But not only that, she, she robbed the man as well. She takes his car, takes his wallet, takes his whatever, and she's off. Yeah, so it's sad. It, it's really sad. She gets arrested anyway. She gets arrested. So this Mr. Allen, um, all of his friends and family, of course, they're going to stick up for him and say that he's actually a really good Samaritan, he's really good, blah, blah, blah. Um, he wouldn't have hurt, hurt her. This was this is untrue. She's lying. But what the documentary doesn't tell you is that there are two, two witnesses um, from the cafe that uh, Sintoya got picked up at by this one was a 17 year old waitress who worked at the restaurant and Alan Johnny Allen visited it regularly and she claimed that she and the other waitress would fight over who had to serve him because he he just made them feel really uncomfortable okay if I'm looking down here it's because I've got notes <clears throat> I can't remember everything. I'm 31 years old, guys. Um, but the judge, 
yeah so he just made him feel really really uneasy and uncomfortable the judge actually um ruled the testimony as irrelevant it didn't matter just because somebody makes you feel uncomfortable um that's got nothing to do with that's got nothing to do with it right okay the second woman so the second woman when she appeared on the stand she claimed that johnny allen had sexually assaulted her i don't know if i can say sexually assaulted i'll probably get demonetized not that we're getting demonetized at the minute anyway um after inviting her home instead of the initial plans to go to a movie so she has said that he's done this to her that doesn't does that not ring alarm bells to anybody there was some there was some speculation or whether to try Sintoya as a minor because she was only 16 years old now, there was a famous murder in England some years ago it wasn't that long ago um and the people who obviously they kidnapped a boy and they the police found the boy's body on train tracks this boy was i think he was two years old i can't remember but the people who killed him i think one was 12 years old one was 10 years old uh, they they got tried and sent to prison basically so yeah so in england there is this thing that we call i think it's age of responsibility where um, basically, the British justice system see people at this certain age um, to know what right and wrong are. And the age is 10, 10 years old. So, people who are under 18 are classed as minors. From 10 years old, you can go to prison. If it's a crime like murder, you will go to prison, basically. If you stolen a packet of fags from the shop down the road and you get arrested, you'll probably just end up going to juvenile. Juvie! Mm, so yeah, so she was 16 years old and she got tried as an adult because obviously, because the crime was that bad, she shot somebody in the head. Sometime, sometime down the line, she had this massive group of people trying to help us, help her. She had celebrities. There was a uh, free Sintoya Brown movement I think it was yeah free Sintoya Brown movement everybody was on it everybody wanted to take part in it they just didn't see that a 16 year old girl could do such a thing right anyway she gets sentenced she gets sent sentenced to life imprisonment sometime down the line um they come to the conclusion that she has got fetal alcohol syndrome fetal alcohol syndrome um which obviously would come from her mother who drank a lot and when she was in her stomach and they say that it affects her ability to make decisions so in that moment if somebody like me felt unsafe we would have got out of there where is she would have just panicked and shot him, which she did. This being said, what drove Sintoya to that kind of life is unknown. Um, the, the documentary kind of portrays her as being this um, wayward child with no mother and whatnot, but she actually was adopted by a, by a teacher, like I said earlier. So she did have somebody who wanted the best for her and she, while she was in prison she did all these she did a GEDs and everything whatever they are uh, we don't I don't have, we don't have GEDs here um but yeah she got an education and she worked hard basically basically which is not really shown in the Netflix documentary as well is that the biggest influence on that case was the celebrities and the free Sintoya Brown movement. Obviously all, all the people, that big group of people you see in that room at the end are obviously to thank as well to her. Well she has to thank now. Um, 
And so at the end, you see her sitting down in front of a judge of governors, I would say. I can't remember, really. And pleading her case. She pleaded self-defence. Um, she pleaded self-defence. There's only one person in this world that will know if that's true or not, and that's Sintoyas. Me, for one, I believe her. Not that, not that I matter <laughs> in the whole thing. But yeah. Um, I do believe her. So, anyway, she goes to this big panel. She sits with them, she sits with her lawyers and says, tells them how hard she's been working in prison, what she's been doing and asking for a second chance at her life, basically. And they, that's in 2017, and they reduce her sentence to 15 years. Now, at this point, been in prison, she'd been in prison for 15 years and she got let out that August of 2017. It's a really good documentary, you should watch it. Definitely watch it. Um, I do believe her, but then again, part of me thinks, well, people would do anything for money. She was on drugs, she was selling a body. If Even if that's not the life that she wanted, she was living with this, this man, she was working for him. Um, and she had everything at home. This, this woman who adopted her loved her dearly and wanted the very best for her but she obviously with this syndrome that she had she couldn't really get it into her head that this woman just wants the best for her and she went on a bit of a wayward ride became a lady of the night and ended up in jail for 15 years at 16 years old Oof. Imagine that. I read somewhere as well, I don't know if this is true, that in America, I, you see every single state has different different things, um, that you can be sent to jail at five years old for committing a crime. So if a five-year-old shoots them, is that true? I read it on the internet somewhere. I googled it. So you can go to prison at five years old. Might be obviously juvenile, but what kind of person would send a five-year-old to prison? I mean, what kind of person would send a ten-year-old to prison? But you know, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I do believe her, but I don't. It's very difficult. But then again, she's had 15 years to think about it. I don't know. They did argue as well that he was asleep. That she, They argued that she lied and he was asleep. He wasn't reaching over. Um, if you watch the documentary, there's a video on there. And apparently he had his arms under his head. But from what I can remember, he didn't. Unless he moved him out when he was shot. But if you shot him in the head, you're not really going to be able to move anything really, right? Um, Sintoya uh, got married in prison. <laughs> she found love, got married in prison, and she's happily married out, out and about, living her best life, which is great. Um... And she's also written a memoir. I will link it down below if you want to go and buy it. It's quite a good read. Go watch it. Go read it. Give me your thoughts in the comments below. If there's any other murder documentary thing that you want me to talk about, let me know. I was going to do Tiger King, but that's been overdone, I think. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, click the like button click subscribe. Don't let the aliens get you on their way out. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. <laughs>